a few months ago, we did a show kind of about the content of wrestling because it gets talked about so much in connection with the U.S. Senate campaign of Linda McMahon, the former CEO of the WWE. You're going to hear a little bit of that show later on today because it's sort of back in the news because her her campaign is even more in the news after winning the primary. Also, a lot of other new things have happened, and there are some new controversies uh, kind of brewing around. One of them has has to do with the uh, death of one of uh, the WWE's former wrestlers, Lance Cade, um, and, and also some comments that, was, that were made by a former WWE wrestler named uh, Chris Nowinski, now head of the Sports Legacy Institute in Boston, uh, on a cable show on the New England Cable Network. And here to help us kind of sort all this stuff out, uh, one of our go-to guys from the world of wrestling, his name, name is Irv Muchnick. He comes from a wrestling family. He's the author of Chris and Nancy, The True Story of the Benoit Murder-Suicide and Pro Wrestling Wrestling's Cocktail of Death. Welcome back to the show, Irv Muchnick. Thank you, Colin. Good to be back. So, um, so help us out with this a, a little bit. Uh, obviously, this uh, very, very tragic story about this uh, young man, Lance Cade. Tell us who Lance Cade was. Well, Lance Cade was a, was a wrestler from the age of nineteen. He died at the, uh, or maybe even eighteen. I'm not sure. Right out of high school, he died at the age of twenty nine, just a week and a half ago, from uh, quote heart failure which is a familiar uh, pattern of uh, young wrestlers in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. There have been, over the last generation, a, an actuarially impossible number of deaths of uh, young wrestlers be- under the age of 50. And he's only the latest. In fact, he's the third ex, very recently uh, a former WWE wrestler who's died just during the course of Linda McMahon's campaign. And I think it's real important for everyone in Connecticut to understand that this is not about soap opera plots. This is not about the Thelma and Louise TV commercials that Linda McMahon is is plastering across the media in your state. But it's about real people dying. And this is not funny. This is decadent. This is depraved. This is disgusting. And I think that we need to get on the radar screen of this Senate campaign uh, Linda McMahon's uh, handling of health and safety standards within her billion-dollar corporation. You know, one of the things, I mean, we have this kind of general sense that, that, that quite a few of these deaths may fit into some kind of pattern uh, that involves possibly use of steroids, possibly use of uh, painkillers and, and maybe alcohol to deal with pain. But not until recently have I encountered the idea that there also might be some kind of brain trauma associated, at least with, with some of the problems uh, that, that lead up to some of these deaths. And, and this uh, young uh, young wrestler, former wrestler, who I guess has kind of turned into an expert on this, was on uh, the, the New England Cable Network talking about this, but but I guess this is sort of another part of it, and, and I, you actually sent me a clip that showed Lance Cade taking a lot of what appeared to be shots to the head, and with wrestling, I mean, it's, it's hard for a, an outsider like me, somebody who doesn't know too much about this, to know exactly how hard that is and how much that hurts. I mean, can you give us a sense of what goes on in the ring? Are these guys taking what, what the, the, the kind of shots to the head that they appear to be taking? Yes, well, there's only so much you can fake, a steel chair, you know, being uh, swung at your body or your head. And one of the paradoxes of wrestling is that it used to be uh, that they tried to hide from the general public the fact that it was worked or faked. And, uh, you know, people took care of each other in the ring. And in the 1980s, the McMahon family, to to get the uh, industry deregulated, so they could get out from under regulations and taxes at the state level, openly put out the story that wrestling you know, is a magic show, that it is fake. Not, not that that was a shock to anybody who wasn't totally naive, but the paradoxical consequence is that it upped the ante on hardcore violence. And now these guys are just like really beating each other up. Lance Cade on the October 6, 2008 edition of Monday Night Raw as some sort of inside punishment because he hadn't followed appropriate dressing room etiquette, uh, was punished by taking 19, by my count, 19 chair shots, including one full force on his head. And incidentally, this is nearly a year after Vince McMahon lied and told CNN that it was eliminating chair shots to the head. In fact, chair shots to the head were not eliminated until January of this year. 
as uh, Linda McMahon's uh, campaign was underway. So you've got that, you've got, you get this guy Chris Nowinski, who was a former WWE performer and a Harvard grad who also had to retire because of repeated concussions. Uh, he he went on and did this interview on, on Neckin, in which he was kind of talking about, he just sort of said it's a very dangerous place in that ring and, and there's not enough oversight there. I, I take it that that's your perception too, that there's there's really not enough e- even done to, to protect the wrestlers and maybe ways that they could be protected. Oh, that's absolutely true. And, and, and of course, Chris Nowinski was, was remaining nonpartisan uh, through this election campaign. He's, he's an advocate for concussion research in all contact sports. But he was infuriated by Linda McMahon's dismissal of Lance Cade as, as uh, just another uh, addict that uh, permeates uh, uh, the industry that she was running. And then when she said, I might have met him only once, uh, Chris Nowinski said that was like kicking dirt on her grave. So he, he entered the fray uh, for the first time. But Chris Nowinski has, has, uh, has been for a number of years uh, uh, leading an institute, one of three medical groups that I know of that are looking for the, uh, the brains of dead athletes to uh, study them for these uh, accumulations of tau proteins in a phenomenon that they're calling chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And there was even a, a, a medical journal article noted in the New York Times last week that is suggesting that, that uh, Lou Gehrig, the baseball icon, might not himself have had what we call Lou Gehrig's disease, but was in fact uh, uh, some kind of uh, tau protein permeation into his spinal fluid that mimicked the, uh, mimicked the uh, symptoms of ALS, but it was also they're suggesting a, a concussion syndrome. So this is a huge subject in all of sports, but it's particularly important in wrestling because there's no regulation whatsoever. And with Lance Cade's death, there has been a race, as there was with two other wrestlers, Chris Benoit and Andrew Martin, to, uh, to get his brain and, and test it for this uh, CTE mm-hmm. syndrome. And it's one of the great untold backstories of the Senate campaign right now, which is what the uh, Chris Nowinski and the other doctors groups are trying to get to the family of this wrestler in San Antonio, Texas, and get permission to study his brain. And I'm sure WWE and Linda McMahon doing all they can to keep that from happening, because if they find that that uh, Lance uh, Cade had CTE, that'll be three for three with wrestlers brain studying. And uh, it's starting to get, uh, the pattern is starting to become very clear. Although uh, one question I guess I would have is, I mean, obviously um, in the case of Chris Benoit and and what happened with him, there would be some real questions about what role a deficient neurology or, you know, any kind of uh, things that that might spring up from, from, you know, real severe neurological deficits, what role that might have contributed to a a murder-suicide like that. Um, In the case of Lance Cade, it does appear that he died of heart failure. So it's hard for me to see exactly how his brain trauma would be relevant to that. Well, look, I think, Colin, the way to view this is not as one single bullet reason for wrestlers dying, but what I call a cocktail of death. And you're quite, you're quite right. We don't know what happened with Chris Benoit in Fayette County, Georgia. I mean, there were domestic problems. There, were, there was substance abuse of some kind. Uh, Chris Benoit's father, Michael Benoit, who's a big advocate on this subject now, he's sort of the... Uh, the Sarah Brady of the uh, of the brain concussion uh, uh, national advocacy among uh, lay people. Uh, he he believes that the whatever drug intakes that were over the top on the part of his son uh, was all tied up in this concussion syndrome, and we won't know which piece of the puzzle is more important than the other. But in the case of Lance Cade, after these horrible chair shots that he took on raw in october of 2008 about a week later he had a seizure on an airplane and it was caused by his overdose of painkillers and muscle relaxers so we've got to think about this as concussions serious injuries that are untreated of various kinds abuse of steroids they have a certain look abuse of painkillers antidepressants, sleep medication, other prescription pharmaceuticals. It's an ugly, ugly story that Linda McMahon would like to dismiss by saying it's just like 
Heath Ledger, and you can't hold Hollywood Studios accountable. Yeah, that but there's a big problem with that argument. Heath Ledger did not sign a contract with a Hollywood studio that included a death clause that said that uh, he would not hold the, uh, the film studio responsible if he was killed on the set while uh, performing a movie, and even if it was because of the gross negligence of the studio. Yeah. So uh, these, these, are, these are extraordinary, off-the-charts, independent contractor contracts. And uh, they, they they should make everyone I think think about what uh, you know what is behind the uh, fifty million dollar war chest that is enabling Linda McMahon to make this run for the U.S. Senate in Connecticut. Irv Munchnik, we're going to have to end it there. But uh, Irv Munchnik, the author of Chris and Nancy: uh, The True Story of the Benoit Murder Suicide and Pro Wrestling's Cocktail of Death. You can read more at uh, WrestlingBabylonWordPress.com. That's his blog. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Colin.